I'm number whatever in the company in the top 10. Whereas if I go to WWE, I start at the bottom, I make less money, I'm on the road more. The only perk is that I get to be with my friend Cody. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, and just to say that I work for the WWE. And a very special guest here today. Well, they're all special, but he's special too, because he's got so much going on. Known from AEW to all of you fans because of the TV programs, but he's been Monster Factory. He's been so many indies through the years. QT Marshall, welcome to the After Chat. How's it going? Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh, I'm haven't, glad. I'm glad. Said glad a word to the public in a long time. So, <laughs> well, this this is good. First of all, most people know you as Q T Marshall. And yeah. No, I was told it's Q T Marshall. It's Marshall. That's right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm, you know what? It's been so long. I don't feel like correcting anybody. <laughs> Just let them say whatever they want. It really doesn't matter to me. What's the? Q -T? It is Marshall. Okay. All right. What's the QT all about? Is it uh, just when I was just, younger, I, I needed a name and uh, QT, I thought went, went with the character that I was portraying, which was this young, good looking guy. And uh, now I'm, you know, a little older and, but they, it stuck. So it's just QT, you know, could be anything, right? Quite talented. Yeah. Uh, Why, oh yeah. Well, you can always, your catch line of course could be, let's keep it on the QT. That's right. Yeah, there it is. So yeah. between that and then Marshall, I just wanted a last name that people could understand. And but I figured if I said Marshall, uh, and I corrected the ring announcer every time, it would get me instant heat, which it did. So that's great. That's yeah. great. It got a little French heat to it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, quite some time ago, um, you left AEW. You said that uh, they weren't going in the direction you wanted to go to. Go go toward and uh now recently we hear uh you're going back to aew so tell yeah. us what you know tell us first uh what was the the beginning of you with aew you started at, at when they were the incarnation of that uh, company yeah i mean i started uh, from day one i was cody rhodes's assistant um yeah and I worked all the way as hard as i could behind the scenes in hopes to, uh, you know, just get as far along as I could all the way to vice president. Um, and then what happened was, ideally, my I became a talent at the same time. Uh, during the pandemic, I was offered a talent contract. And that was like the only thing legally binding me to AEW. So uh, right about August of this year, my contract was coming up. August of 20... Of 2023, right before All In. Um, right. And I actually had given my notice then that I was going to leave and I was just going to go wrestle and just go. I had some other things I wanted to do. Um, and then Tony and I spoke and he was like, well, why don't you stay? And, you know, uh, maybe I could do something with you more as the AAA Latin American champion and stuff. I said, OK, yeah, sure. You know, ideally, I didn't know what I was really going to do. Uh, I had spoken to Scott DeMore over at Impact and maybe I was going to go do something for them. And Tony was very understanding towards that, all of this stuff. Ooh. Um, so I signed this extension and then came time for the end of the year and Tony and I kind of spoke a little bit about stuff. And my biggest thing was, I just didn't want to sign a long-term contract. That's it. Right. Uh, but because of that, I had to resign from the job itself. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I couldn't do one or the other. So it was like, Hey, I'm going to resign. I have this idea to do turnbuckle championship wrestling with Teal. We'll, uh, we will get to that. That's one of the, which we'll get to I'll later. Um, you know, I just have a lot of things I want to do. I just kind of want to relax. I've been on the road five years straight. And I mean, I've never publicly stated stuff, but like, man, I worked harder than most people at AEW. And if that ruffles feathers, I don't care. Um, yeah, I did. I, I busted my, you know, my butt for them in, in hopes that, maybe it would lead to more in the ring maybe um but they're two separate things and and when we spoke tony and i spoke about that we both were on a, the same uh page about like hey well you know a lot of people think i left to become this big star that's not what it was at all uh i i mean Brian my Dan first Dan thought what my first thought was you were going to jump to wwe <laughs> no i mean Back in, and, in, I, in, and I'll be in, honest. In a producer. In a producer. Sure. And that's the thing. I mean, Tony and I have spoken numerous times about this. I'm not going to go to WWE just to be a producer. 
I could do that at AEW, where I could work one day a week. And, uh, you know, I'm number whatever in the company in the top 10. Whereas if I go to WWE, I start at the bottom, I make less money, I'm on the road more. The only perk is that I get to be with my friend Cody. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, and just to say that I work for the WWE, which, hey, it's been my dream since I'm eight years old, but it's not my dream to be a producer for the WWE. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, you know, and I did speak to them and we don't know what could happen, right? I mean, ideally I'm back with AEW under uh, just an employee role. Uh, well, it's that's, like that's, that's what I want to break in and ask yeah, you. So what, what, is the re what is the reason and the role that you've decided to go back? So basically I flew down to Jacksonville to talk to Tony uh, in December maybe, or maybe the first week of January or something like that. And I was just talking to him about stuff and explaining what I want to do. And, you know, again, with the turnbuckle stuff and uh, I can go on the Indies and wrestle all the time and, you know, go from uh, Massachusetts on Friday to San Diego on Saturday, back to somewhere else on Sunday. That's the Indies. That's the Indies, right? And. I could do that and I might do that because um, that's kind of the benefit that I have with working with AEW. And that's the biggest thing, there's freedom. Um, there's freedom and there's great pay, you know, which I've earned. So it's like, hey, I did step away and the direction that AEW was going in uh, at that moment when I was there, when Tony and I had our discussion, which would have been in like Oakland, uh, November 10th, that's when I had spoken to him and let him know that I was going to be staying home. So it's not like uh, the end of November, I put out a statement and that was like the first anyone heard about it. I had been sitting home for weeks. So, and Tony and I, like I said, we have a very, very different relationship than many people do. I mean, him and I, were in the trench, you know, we were in the trenches together during the pandemic. We were up till, you know, 7 a.m. writing shows and doing stuff. And so, I, I don't ever go on the internet and argue people. It's not worth it to me. You know, I know yeah. what I do. I know what I've done. I know what my job consists of. Um, I never once wrote TV for other people. I never once wrote TV for myself. I did right. my job that I was told to do. The, the I think the greatest conflicting story to me was, you know, QT wanted to be on TV all the time um, and he wanted to be a big star. Okay, so why would I do QTV and be Will Hobbs' manager if I had dreams of being a humongous TV yeah. wrestling? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I did what I was yeah. told to do. Um, and and I believe, and I've always instilled that in our students, to just do your job, be good at your job, and whatever they give you, try to do your best with it. And if it Absolutely. doesn't, if it's not a home run every time, it is what it is, right? It's like any other uh regular company, not a That's wrestling it. company or anything. It's, it's your job. Every so tell us- job, Tell us now uh, what your new role will be in so, AEW. So basically by the end, uh, when I say the end, by the end of like last year, when I was about to, uh, to exit, I wasn't really doing as much as I was doing because we had Jimmy Jacobs come in. So we just go to work. I sit in the office with Tony, he bounces ideas, um, you know, and I give him my opinion, but at the end of the day, he's the boss. And I think that's more or less what this is about. It's like, hey, he understood where I was coming from in the sense of like, could I go get a job at WWE? I'm sure. I spoke to MLW. I, I spoke to a bunch of players. I'm sure I could get a job somewhere. Yeah. Again, you're very you you became a very valuable commodity. I, I tried. <laughs> you know, at least I tried to. Um, but again, I think it's why do something else if I know that this is like I already know this this uh, I don't want to say this devil because the AEW is not a devil. But like, I know this extreme, I know what this is, I'm comfortable with this, so let me- Yeah, the shoe fits perfectly. Right, and I can handle it. And um, and Tony's very good about if I, like I said, I mean, the report came out, I mean, we probably agreed to everything six weeks ago. I haven't left my house since. And so it's like, you know- you No, know, we're, taping, we're taping this on uh, uh, February 22nd. Uh, right, June yeah, so I mean, ideally it's been, since the second week of January, maybe. And I haven't been to an AEW show. Um, so, and that's been part of the idea was like, because of all the other stuff I have going on, it's how can we kind of help each other and so on and so forth. And so, you know, what, so what, what, what is the new position? So I'm back to the same old position, vice president of creative coordination. And a lot of it is dealing with talent. 
and it's it's getting the talents ideas to tony uh because if not if we don't have somebody like that you know sanjay's good at that as well there are other people but there's a lot of talent and they all have ideas and AEW is that kind of company that you know like the more and this is not just AEW. i think every wrestling company if you come to the table with ideas whether they're good or bad we can filter through and then make them better or 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 just tell you hey that's not a good idea come back to the drawing fine board. fine tune them fine tune them a little bit uh no you can't work with that person because that person's doing something with this person and da, 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 whatever and it works um but you need the, all those people there and we all have to be one big team and so on and so forth and like i said it just to me if i wasn't going to go to wwe and wrestle which I mean, when I spoke to them, I think it was like a four, three, four minute conversation. And they just kind of just asked me what I wanted to do. And I told them what I would like to do. And we never even got past that point. I mean, I remember, you know, the guy that kind of linked me up with them was like, wait, you're already going back to AD? I said, yeah, because I understand what I want to do and what I want to do. Even if I was a full time, you know, uh, in ring talent at WWE, I couldn't do all this stuff. You know what I mean? It's like. Of course, that's everybody's dream is to do main event WrestleMania. But at the end of the day, like that takes a lot of work, a lot of passion, a lot of uh, sacrifice and so on and so forth. And for the other stuff that I want to do and what I have going on with the school and all this stuff, I, I just think this is the best fit for me. Um, unless it's something that comes along and it's the greatest opportunity and I, I can't say no, right? But ideally, I'm not in that position, so it's not something I think about. Yeah. So now you mentioned uh, headlining WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, this guy you've known forever, forever, is going to be headlining WrestleMania. Yeah. As you know, Cody yeah. has picked Roman Reigns. Isn't it nice, by the way, that we can talk about two companies because there are these. Everybody knows WWE, AEW. We can go down the line, but you know these are the companies with the the, the biggest budgets with the biggest TV. Sure. I mean, everybody knows these companies exist. So Cody at WrestleMania. Now, has he totally surpassed where you think he would have uh, gotten in this in this business? So you, how long have you known him? Well, I mean, like super close. I've known him for seven, eight years, right? Yeah. Roughly. Um, yeah. But Yes and no, right? So like, I figured, of course, when he came back to WWE, he would be a, a you know the top guy. I just that he kind of knew. Plus, I knew. Do you think? Do you think that being in AEW on TV helped that as well? A hundred percent. I think. Okay. okay. Getting him away from WWE and letting him do his own thing and figuring it out on his own, what he needed to do, and so on and so forth, and like. People always say, like, well, what do you think he did at the school? And I always say, well, from what he told me, he went and did every independent show he possibly could do. He met he every did. single fan, shook their hand, spoke to them, looked them in the eye like human beings, and just told them how much he appreciated their support. And he's running for president. That, yeah. It, well, and, yeah. I, and I mean, ideally, right, if you look at the WWE as uh, or wrestling as this this huge entity, which it is. He wanted to be the top person. So that's kind of what you have to do. And then you have to perform and so on and so forth. And he got, you know, a couple of things in AEW that maybe he didn't love. But again, as a, I think him and I have that similar mentality in the sense of you do what you're told to do and you make it the best you can. And that's it. And, then, you know, a lot of people, I hate the idea of, oh, well, he just wanted to work with QT, his friend. They, they couldn't be anything further than the truth. You know what I mean? Like we sat there, it was like, of course, in my mind, I thought, well, that's great for me. I get to turn, really? um, I get to a lot of TV time. But I also knew that there's levels to what we do. And it, it didn't make, anyway, long story short, uh, I did when he went back to WWE and I saw the reactions he was getting and then, you know, gutting it out with a torn peck. Uh, that's unheard of, right? And then it's like, yeah. The only thing I didn't think, and he'll probably be upset with me for saying this, was that he was going to turn my hero, The Rock, into a bad guy. <laughs> you know oh what I mean? my God. That is a lot of power. If you think about it, that guy's done some things, um, you know, that, that not everyone has been big fans of when it comes to the outside of the wrestling stuff between movies and all this other drama that yeah. I don't know about, but I, I read about it. 
Um, and people still love him. And then the moment that he said, you know, hey, I'm going to be in the main event. That was it. That's all he had to say was, oh, and everyone yeah. thought, you're not messing up Cody's story. And so yeah. that's something that him and I do talk about, um, you know, just how wild it is that. Yeah, know, it really is. is. I mean, that, I mean, that it, moment. It, rock it, you had like, like that, right, you had CM Punk, you had Daniel Bryan, and but <laughs> they were going against, you know, the regime, the heels, and, you know, like, it's completely different. This guy's going oh, against yeah. the rock. Yeah. You know, and thank God, because I all I own are Project Rock sneakers, so now I don't have to go to the school barefoot. Or there oh, get, see, that's very that, cool. That's very yeah, cool. So. And, you know, there's uh, that moment when Rock turned to Cody and said, now we have a problem. It gave me chills. Yeah. 